The three markers we choose are the only ones we can use. I got three. Woo! Yay, it's a three marker challenge. Hang on for the loop. Four, three, two, one. I'm Ricky. I'm Jamie. Ricky, does it totally stress you out to only have three colors to choose from? Only a little bit. I'm gonna have to get creative. While the color choice does stress me out, I do find it very relaxing to color. Oh, is it like a peaceful activity for you? It is, especially since I don't have to draw. Do you ever journal or anything like that to like write down your feelings and your emotions? I don't. I typically just talk out loud about how I'm feeling to my friends or to my sister. Yeah. No, I just got into journaling and it's been very exciting. Like oh, I, good. I think usually I also like to just talk things out. But yeah. What I found was really helpful is that like I get to just have my own thoughts about things and so mm. I don't feel like I'm trying to That's a really good point. Like self-edit how I feel. I just get to process all of it out on paper and usually almost all the time it ends up just becoming like prayer journaling for me. Yeah. Yeah. That's really, really good. All right, how are you feeling about the three colors that you have? Are they working? So far, so good. I think more than the color choice is stressing me out is whenever I color, I don't just color with markers. Like I oh. typically color with crayons and markers because I like to outline it with the marker and then I like to like shade it in with the crayon. So, but it's still really fun. I'm still enjoying it. And I think the colors that I got really work well with my coloring sheet that I got. To find peace, it's helpful to have activities that help you calm down. Like journaling or coloring. It also helps to have a peaceful phrase like this. I could have been the next Taylor Swift. Truly. When I was younger, I wrote my emotions out as song lyrics. There is a cassette tape somewhere in this world that contains my Lost Vault tracks. That's embarrassing. But when I go back and I look at my old journals, it actually reminds me a lot of the Book of Psalms. My journals from sixth grade make me laugh, but there's journals from recent years that looking back on them makes me cry. You see, I can pick up a journal from any time in my life, and although I'm not still in that place, I instantly remember how I felt and what was going on. And that's what the psalmists in the Bible are able to do. You read a psalm like, I'm in deep trouble. I'm so sad I can hardly see. My whole body grows weak with sadness, Psalm 31. Or, I can't sleep. I've become like a bird alone on a roof, Psalm 102. Or, I grow weak. Deep down inside me, I'm afraid, Psalm 143. The weight of the world is bearing down on the author who is saying, I'm troubled, I'm sad, lonely, afraid. God, are you even listening? Do you even care? Do you ever feel the same way? What would your journal entry say? No matter your answer, Jesus has a response to the troubled, to the sad, to the lonely, to the afraid, to the stressed out, burned out, or broken hearted, to you feeling the weight of the world today. Jesus has a word for you. Take heart. I have overcome the world. It just means have courage. Take heart is like a Jesus catchphrase. He said it a lot. To people who needed healing, to people who want hope, to people who crave peace. It's a simple phrase to memorize and to say to yourself when you need more peace. Breathe and take heart. Breathe. And take heart. I like that. Me too. Okay, so our artwork. I think it turned out super great. Ta-da. 
Woohoo! I love the pink forest. And I love that planet. I'd like to go visit there sometime. Thank you. All right, so for round two of our three marker challenge, we are going to choose three new colors and make a frame for our artwork. Yes, so we're gonna toss these colors, choose three all new markers, and we're going to decorate the frame however we want. <gasps> Ooh, oh, it's a pretty frame. One, two, three. Okay, this works, this One. works. Two, three. Oh, okay. Nice. I like it. These are moody colors. This is more pink than I thought it was going to be. I'm so glad. I love pink. What are times in your life when you need to remember to take heart? Ooh. Um, I'd probably say usually when I'm working or like studying on stuff, sometimes I get really stressed about like the work I have to do. And so my brain is like, okay. You got something to prove, you better do a good job. The thing I have to remind myself to take heart in is that like, I have to remember like my worth isn't in my work. And yes, two things that I really worry about are uh, making mistakes and upsetting people. But one thing that I've realized that whenever I am spending time and energy worrying about things like that, that I am taking myself out of my moment for that day and that I'm losing out on the opportunity to find the joy that God has given me in that day because I'm spending so much time worrying. Mm. So I don't wanna waste the time that God has given me. I've been through hard things and God has seen me through every single hard thing that I've been through. And God's given me peace whenever I've been facing something really hard. So yeah, I don't wanna lose my joy to fear. Usually if I know I'm going to be in a stressful situation, I will listen to a playlist that puts me in a yeah. more peaceful, peaceful mood. Mm -hmm. I was uh, I was just talking about that with my sleep sheep. Your what? You know my sleep sheep? This little guy. And now the Loop Show interviews a sheep about peace. Oh, sorry. I was up late last night. This one guy who wouldn't fall asleep counted me like five times. Normally they just count me once, but he counted me five times. This is crazy. Anyway, I'm excited to be here. What is it about counting sheep that helps people sleep? I think it's our I think it's our wool. I think it's very comforting. It reminds them of pillows and blankets. People are just counting one, two, three. See, it's very effective. I fell asleep counting myself. I love getting people to sleep. I think it's so fun. I love it so much that sometimes I go back into line and people count me again. So far, nobody's noticed. Not to brag, I have 100% accuracy. I'm very proud of my numbers. They've skyrocketed since last quarter. So how long have you been doing this? Oh, I've been helping people fall asleep for, I think, 50 years now. It's pretty great. I started when I was a wee lad, just five days old. And I really caught a passion for it about year uh, five. That's when I really started to fall in love with the job. Jumping and like, you know, twirling about and just boo! Sometimes I like to surprise people. You really just gotta shake it up. That's how I found my passion in this. Are there any secrets about counting sheep that we don't know? Oh yeah. Number one, you can count in twos. You can also count by fives. Fives are my favorite. Five, 10, 15. It's got like a little rhythm to it. You can also count by halves. You can go half of one, one, half of one and a half. You. you can. I'm not that good at that one, but you can come by so many different ways. It's kind of like a trade secret. It's awesome. This is a truth about peace according to Jesus. You see, in the book of John, Jesus is talking to his friends, and this is what he says. A time is coming, and in fact has come, when you will be scattered, each to your own home. You will leave me all alone. Yet I am not alone, for my Father is with me. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. So what can we learn about peace from what Jesus says? 
Well, the first thing we can learn is that you are not alone because God is always with you. Jesus tells the disciples here that they're gonna be scattered, but he's gonna still be with them. And that is true for us today. Peace comes from God walking beside you. He's still with you. The next thing we can learn is that you can have peace because you will face trouble. Jesus doesn't promise a life full of just everything we want and never anything bad. He says there will be trouble, but it's okay because peace comes from walking with Jesus. There is peace in a relationship with Jesus that you can have. Peace comes from walking with Jesus. And then the last thing, you can make it through because Jesus has overcome the world. The weight that you feel, the burdens that you carry, you don't have to carry them alone. There's peace available. Jesus loves you. God wants a relationship with you. Jesus has overcome the world through the cross. So give that up to him. Peace comes through the cross. God loves you and he has a plan for your life. So the, 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 the anxiety that you feel, the hard times you're going through, give them all to Jesus. He paid for them on the cross. There's peace available for you. So take heart and have peace. Look at the art. Ooh, I like it. You got so much coloring done. Thank you, thank you. Yes, really good job. Listen, if you aren't framing your art, like I think it steps it up a whole couple of levels. So what are the elements for you that make something peaceful for you? Um, I would say just having like plenty of time to do whatever it is that I'm doing makes it peaceful for me or having peaceful music playing. Yeah, I really liked just the task at hand, like completing a task, the action of it was mm -hmm. really nice for me. Yeah. If you ever wonder if God cares about your hurt. Or if you wonder where he is. Or maybe you're having a really rough day. You need to tap into a peace that passes all understanding. The Bible has stories of help, hope, and healing. Maybe a good place to start is Psalm 23. We're gonna take a second to breathe. During the next few minutes, practice asking God to fill you with peace. Take heart, you're not alone. You can have peace and you can make it through. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for His name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Psalm 23. Remember, you are not alone because God is always with you. You can have peace because you will face trouble. You can make it through because Jesus has overcome the world. This week, spend some time asking God to remind you of His peace. Find a quiet space and get some praying done. Write down how you're feeling. Or read a psalm or two. And if you need a peaceful playlist, we got you. Check out our peace mixtape that we made for you on our channel. You can have peace. Because God is always with you. And until next time, enjoy, enjoy the ride. ride! Yeah, so I really think, I, I think wanna, there's, I, yeah, some I space back here. this up. Let's do it. 
God is always with you and you can make it through whatever situation you're facing because Jesus has overcome the world. Now, what does that mean and how did he do it? Well, Jesus overcame everything that could possibly separate you from the love of God. Jesus beat sin and death by dying. See, God loved you so much that he was so not okay with anything coming between you and him and your relationship. So he sent Jesus, his one and only son from heaven to become a human. And Jesus took all of your sin and my sin on himself. And then he died on the cross, the death that our sin caused him to have to die. And when he died on the cross, he was then buried in a tomb. But three days later, God rose Jesus from the dead, proving that sin, death, and the devil didn't have power over him and that nothing could separate you from God's love. And now, anyone who calls on Jesus can be rescued from their sin and can have a right relationship with God. That's right, you can have peace with God forever. And you'll never have to face anything alone ever again. Because when you say yes to Jesus, His Spirit comes and lives on the inside of you and empowers you to be an overcomer too. So if you're hearing this and you're like, yes, Caitlin, I am ready to step into that relationship with Jesus and have peace with God, then I'm gonna ask you to do a bold thing and raise your hand on the count of three. Here we go. One, God loves you. Two, Jesus made a way for you to have peace with God. Three, raise your hand right now. As hands are going up all over the place, I just wanna celebrate with you because this is the best decision you will ever make. And it's a decision you had to make on your own, but you don't have to pray alone. All of you right now, we're going to repeat this prayer out loud together. Here we go. Dear God, thank you for loving me. Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross and then rising from the dead so that I could be saved and so that I could be free. Today, God, I give you my life. Make me a new person. Fill me with your spirit so I can follow you. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen and amen and amen. If that is you, I am so incredibly excited for you and the decision you just made. Make sure you tell someone before you leave today so we can all celebrate with you.